Good evening. <laughs> Welcome to The Rock. Would you stand and sing with us? seated. Good evening, The Rock. I was so concerned I was going to say good morning. Good evening. Hey, we're great that you're, or happy that you're here with us tonight on this Ash Wednesday as we begin our 40-day journey 
uh, to the cross and empty tomb of Jesus. There's a few things just in the way of how things are going to work tonight. Um, if you have any prayer requests that you'd like us to pray over tonight, um, bring those up with you as you come to receive the imposition of ashes tonight. There's baskets on the stands on either side, and we'll do the imposition of ashes like we do Holy Communion. We'll do one side, and then we'll do the other, and you can put your prayer requests in there. Um, our gathering of offerings and tithes tonight will be during our last song, and as always, there are online options that you can choose to give a financial gift as well, so beware of those. And there's a slide that will be included uh, when we get to that portion of our worship tonight. Okay? Everything's clear, right? Ash Wednesday. A time when we come and begin this journey of repentance and reflection. And remember that it was solely because of our sin that God sends Jesus. The blackness of the ashes remind us of the blackness of our sin. And yet tonight when you come up and you receive that imposition of ashes, those ashes will be made in the shape of the cross where your sin and mine is washed away. The blackness is turned white as snow. So yeah, 40-day journey. Uh, 40 days excluding Sundays because Sundays are the day of worship and where the body of Christ gathers together so we don't include those days in the 40-day count. And so... That's where we're headed. Our series that we'll begin on Sunday is going to be simply called Where Jesus Walked. I had to get it right. I usually get the word wrong. Where Jesus Walked. And we'll go to different places where Jesus is as he carries out his earthly ministry on earth. So tonight, let's begin right away with our theme verse from Romans 6, verse 11. Would you say this with me? So you also should consider yourselves to be dead to the power of sin and alive to God through Christ Jesus. So tonight, what I want to focus on and just for a few moments is these two words in that passage that I've underlined, dead and alive. Now, it wasn't until I moved here to Seward about 13 years ago and went to uh, the uh, benefit uh, trivia night for the St. John Lutheran School here in town, and they played this game to raise uh, money called Dead or Alive, and I had never heard of it before. And you paid a, you, got a, you stood up and you paid a dollar if you wanted to play, you know. And it was always funny because it was always sponsored by the funeral homes. I just laughed when I heard that the first time. Now it's a regular thing, you know. So uh, dead or alive. And what the, what the premise was is that uh, they would give the name of usually someone who's famous, and then you had to decide whether they were dead or alive by putting your thumb up if they were alive and thumb down if they were dead. And if you were wrong, then you sat down. And at the end, whoever they had left, they'd do you know, a final like playoff round, and you won like a cake from Grandma Ruby that she made or something. I don't know what it was, something like that. So uh, Dead or Alive, we're going to play a little bit of that uh, tonight here. Now, we're not going to have two sides against each other. We're just going to, since we all love one another and we're a forever family, we're just going to play this all together. So you shout it out if you know it, okay? So you're going to say Dead or Alive, depending upon what the name is up there. Got it? Got it. Put the first one up there. Mikhail Gorbachev, you know, the former leader of the Soviet Union. I figured since we were in this time of tension between Ukraine and, the Soviet, and, and, and Russia that we would put that up there. Is he dead or alive? alive. He is alive. It is. You're correct. Someone just knew that. I heard that on the radio today, so I've got to do that one. 
91, Mikhail Gorbachev is still alive. Next one. Peggy Fleming, famous Olympic ice skater. She is alive. Yes, very much alive. I don't know if she does much skating anymore, but she is alive. How about the next one? Whitney Houston, dead or alive? Famous pop singer. She is dead. Yes, she is, tragically. Here's one more. Sandra D. Now you have to be a little bit older to know who Sandra D is, movie star of the 1960s. Is she alive or dead? Some of you are going, who in the world is that? She is dead. Yes, she is dead. Yep. Next one. Tom Landry, famous coach of the Dallas Cowboys. Tom Landry is dead. Yes, he is. We have another one here. Hank Williams Jr., country western singer. Family tradition, I heard that, yes. He is alive, yes. Now, if I just changed the junior to senior, then it would be dead, yeah, yeah. So those two words from that passage, dead and alive, got me also thinking about something that happened in our family this past month in that... Um, one of my son's cars uh, literally died. So much, so, and he'd only had it like, what was it, maybe three or four months? Engine kaputsk, you know, uh, the uh, crack in the block and all, oh, just like, you know, when you're hearing those things, you just go. So uh, I had to give him, I didn't have to, but I was gracious enough. I love my son. So I gave him my truck to drive back to Kearney where he's going to school. And so that meant that we are left with what we call in our family, lovingly and affectionately, with all due respect, the Blue Bomber. It is a, uh, what is it, about a, is it a 2000 and, I don't know, something like that, uh, Chrysler Town and Country minivan. And so uh, it uh, wasn't in good shape uh, at all. Right here, this picture, you can see that the front um, ornament label thing is just gone. I don't know when that... Oh. And then here is the uh, one of the lights, that casing around the light is busted out. Uh, the light bulb still works, though. Um, here's another photo. You can't really tell this, but there is a crack uh, directly across the windshield and down the driver's side, and then there's another one on the passenger side. So it's kind of a challenge to see through, but you can see. Um, and this is uh, what the driver's seat looks like, and I don't know how that bottom portion got pulled off, but it, it did, probably from sliding in and out of the seat there. That's what happened there. Um, yeah, and she's got her share of rust on some of the wheel wells right there. Um, and that's on the back uh, end gate or whatever door. I mean, that's, all, that's, you know, that's probably the worst one. Um, and uh, one of the things that I forgot to put in there was, uh, I don't think at least, unless we passed it, was the side mirrors. Uh, the plastic that encases those is kind of busted out. So what we've done is use uh, black duct tape and kind of wrapped it around there. And, you know, from a distance, you go, oh, you can't really tell. You get up there and it's like, oh, my gosh, goodness, here it is. This thing is uh, pretty much dead. So it uh, hadn't, hasn't run for like six months, maybe on and off pretty much dead, of no use, just kind of sitting there, wasting away. That is so like you and me, apart from Jesus. Dead wasting away. Oh, we may be very much physically alive, but are spiritually dead. And, and death is the consequence of sin. We will all die. And if one is separated from God, 
forever, there is also an eternal death, a spiritual death. I mean, we talked last Sunday even how when God created Adam and Eve and breathed into Adam as he's lying there on the ground, his own breath into his nostrils, God gave Adam a soul, a spirit that was made to be in eternity with God forever, both body and spirit. And once sin came into the world through the disobedience of Adam and Eve, that all changed and they died, their spirits died, separated from God forever unless God would intervene. And they would also die physically as well. And that's the same for you and me. Sin and death are realities. And God takes sin very seriously. Because the only way that sin can be remedied is with perfection. And nobody in here is perfect. I mean, totally and completely perfect. And yet the Bible reminds us, even Jesus himself says that God is not a God of death, but is a God of life. Matthew 22, these are the words of Jesus. But now as to whether there will be a resurrection of the dead, haven't you ever read about this in the scriptures? Long after Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had died, God said, I am the God of Abraham the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. So he is the God of the living, not the dead. You see, even though those patriarchs had died, God still identified himself as their God because their spirits are alive with him because of the promised covenant that he made with them to send a Savior God is not the God of death. God is the God of life. And so his plan all along was to send one who would be perfection in our place, do what we could not do, be what we could not be, so that we could be made right with him and be in his presence forever. Isaiah talks about this at length, and I just want to share a few of those passages with you tonight. My servant, Jesus, grew up in the Lord's presence like a tender green shoot, like a root in dry ground. There was nothing beautiful or majestic about his appearance, nothing to attract us to him. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows acquainted with deepest grief, and we turned our backs on him and looked the other way. Yet it was our weaknesses he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. All of us like sheep have strayed away. We've left God's paths to follow our own. And yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. You see, it should have been you and I that died the horrific death that Jesus died. And yet because the God is not the God of death, but the God of life, he places it all on Jesus for you and for me. Isaiah 64 goes on to say this, You welcome those who gladly do good, who follow godly ways, but you have been very angry with us, for we are not godly. We are constant sinners. How can people like us be saved? We are all infected and impure with sin. When we display our righteous deeds that are nothing but filthy rags, like autumn leaves, we wither and fall, and our sins sweep us away like the wind. And yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are the potter. We are all formed by your hand. See, it's through faith in Jesus and that faith that God gives you and me at baptism where he joins us to what Jesus did for you and me. In the water.
waters of baptism, we gain Jesus' perfection and holiness. And Jesus carries our sin on him. Because only Jesus can pay the penalty. And only Jesus can triumph over death with life. Just before our theme verse, it says this. I hope it does. We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. For when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. And since we died with Christ, we know we also live with him. We are sure of this, sure of this, because Christ was raised from the dead and he will never die again. Death no longer has any power over him. And then our theme verse from verse 11. So you also should consider yourselves to be dead to the power of sin and alive to God through Christ Jesus. You know, what we did with the blue bomber is uh, we got the battery charger out, put it on there for about eight hours or so, made an appointment for an oil change and got the fluids, you know, up to snuff. Oh, first of all, it started after the, after the charging. Put some air in the tires as some of them were pretty low and she purrs like a kitten I've been driving her for a month she was made alive made alive because she was connected to the source of what could make her go, right? The new battery power, air pressure, all those good things. And so are you, connected to Jesus Christ through faith. Connected with him forever as part of his family through your baptism into the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And so... Romans 6 verse 14 says this, Sin no longer is your master, for you no longer live under the requirements of law. Instead, you live under the freedom of God's grace. You once were dead, and now you're alive. The cross that you will receive tonight will be a reminder of that. As you begin your Lenten journey, where Jesus walked. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you that you have pointed out the way to be made alive. Yes, even though our physical bodies will die, our souls will live forever. And then on that day when Jesus returns, body and soul will be reunited and perfected to live with Jesus face to face and all those who have gone before us in the new heaven and the new earth. It is good, Lord, for us tonight to remember that it was our sin that sent Jesus to the cross. And yet may we also never forget that you are the God of life and you demonstrate that in Jesus. It's in his strong and precious name that we pray. Amen. Let's take a look at this video before we begin the imposition of ashes. God, how far down? How far down do I need to go? My soul is at rock bottom. I know what I did. And the worst part, I knew what I was doing. And 
I still did it anyway. I won't pretend. I won't make excuses. I have left a trail of tears and pain behind me. They didn't deserve it, God. It was my fault. The shrapnel from my explosion shouldn't hurt them. I've wronged you, God. I've taken the trust you put in me. I've taken the love you gave to me and threw it all away like it meant nothing to me. I'm sorry, God. Your love is everything to me. And yet all I feel is empty. Please, God, don't take your presence away. Pick me up from this muddy pit that I dug and drop me into a pool of clean water. I need this dirt washed from me. I need to swim from the bottom and break through to the surface. A new person. I want to be new, God. I will leave my baggage at the bottom. You can give me a new start. I will be a servant of the living God. As you come forward tonight for the imposition of ashes, if you are blessed to have bangs, which I don't, um, I would ask that you would help me out by you know, removing those so I can get to your forehead. I don't want to put ashes in your hair. Also, if you're taller than I am, maybe a little bending over a little bit would help um, as well. So uh, we'll do the imposition of ashes now, and I'll ask the band to come up so they can start.
Please pray with me. Lord God, we come to you tonight with the things that are on the hearts of your people. There are those who need healing. There are those who need protection. There are those that uh, are in uh, difficult situations. There are those who need restoration. There are those who celebrate. And so we lift them all before you tonight, Lord, for safe travel for college uh, students and uh, all those who are embarking on travels and missions to Guatemala and to Costa Rica. Lord, give them safety and give them strength and give them courage as they serve. Lord, we pray for uh, Carolyn, who is in need of healing, as well as Christy and Deborah, for Gabby. and for all who we name on our hearts right now. Touch them with your healing and restore them to health. We pray, pray for relationships amongst families that they would be restored. We pray that you would strengthen and encourage leaders within our families. That modeling of the faith would be evident and seen and copied. We pray for protection for, for Kaylee expecting a new baby. We pray that uh, you would uh, see both of those lives joined together in new ways. We pray for safe travel for Sophie as well. For those that are in Ukraine, Lord, we pray that you would give them all that they need, that you would restore their hope and their dreams as the God who is the God of life, the God of deliverance. Lord, we too pray that peace would prevail, that hardened hearts would be softened with peaceful resolutions. Lord, spring break in its various places is about to begin, and we pray that there would be safety in that, and decisions that are made would be pleasing, and, and health would be had. Lord, these are just some of the things that are before us and are our concerns. And yet we lift them all to you in the strong and precious name of Jesus, trusting in your promise to hear and to answer in the way that is best for us. We ask it all in the strong and precious name of Jesus, who has taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Speak with me our theme verse one more time for this evening. So you also should consider yourselves to be dead to the power of sin, and alive to God through Christ Jesus. Uh, as you leave tonight, I'm going to put some Advent, or Advent Lent calendars on the counter out there that you can take home for you and your family to uh, go through. There's usually a scripture passage, maybe a suggestion to talk about or, or a suggested uh, craft to do. I just uh, offer those to you as uh, a tool for your family devotion time during this Lenten season. With that, let's stand and close out our uh, time of worship today with our closing song.
became sin, who knew no sin, that we might become his righteousness. He humbled himself and carried the cross. Love so and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Messiah. Yeah. Name above all. 